Your party, my party, this is the people's party. Well, I'm Charles Schultz, and I come from the United States of America. My interests are science and technology, and all my life I've been interested in finding out how things work and why. But I've also found that I can easily communicate a lot of ideas to people. I feel very easy explaining things and learning from people. And I like to share what I learn. I think that I can learn something from everybody I meet. But in return, I like to share the things that I find out to help people live a little easier, or better life. I enjoy science and technology because it gives us the leverage to control our environment. And when you come down to it, living well is summed up in controlling your environment. And many people have found that it's difficult to work with their environments they end up destroying things. There's always a better way. I spent many years in aerospace and weapons systems, and the things that I learned to keep people alive in space and under extreme conditions can be easily applied to our everyday lives. Why not bring that technology back to the ground where we have so much more to work with and make life better? So those are the things that drive me, making life better, letting us have enjoyable lives, and not damage everything around us in the process. Originally, I did a lot of work in electronic systems, automation, I built uh, systems that performed the diagnostics and debug capacities on manufacturing lines for weapons and aerospace. And I developed a conscience and I had to leave the aerospace industry. I wasn't certain we were doing the right thing with what we were building. But most of my work has been developing new ways of controlling things and understanding things. I did some research in nuclear effects and in nuclear physics. I also worked very closely with the Science Center in Orlando, worked in the planetarium, developing automation and optical systems and a laser system for their shows. Um, I built some robots for Disney and Epcot. I did a lot of robotics and I taught robotics to young people, middle school and up, for many years. And that was one of my most interesting pursuits. Young people have the ability to learn anything. And I found that they were very, very adept at understanding electronics, chemistry, physics, rocketry. And so one of the things that I truly enjoy is teaching because of that. But my research has carried me in many different directions. Um, electronics, uh, computing. I spent five years researching artificial intelligence and robotics. So I got to enjoy building robots of every type and programming them to do all sorts of things. And a lot of people think it's all about building a machine. Anybody can build a machine. Any good machinist can do that. The real art of robotics is sensing and processing and getting the actions you expect. It's like building an organism. You know, Things are changing greatly in the world, and we look at the situations that are uh, all around us, and we wonder, what's the best place to be? And I think that many people are concerned about what their future holds. So we began exploring alternatives to where we were to study different places where we could live. And the, the qualifications are very simple. You want a place where people are capable of having fresh water and growing food, and having a nice, friendly environment, one that's benign. I don't think that people would choose to live in the Arctic, given the choice and the Caribbean is just one of the most gracious places on earth. And so what brought us to Montserrat was basically a search for a nice place to live where we could make real contributions. I think one of the things that many expats miss is their ability to become a part of the community that they join. And many tend to be, I don't know, isolated. They find a nice castle on the hillside and there they stay. And I think that that's really the wrong way to look at things. When you move somewhere, you want to learn about the people, you want to listen with their needs, are and find what you can do to become a part of that community. Everything that we do has a cost and everywhere we live there's a cost incurred. We have to learn to become a part of it all. Otherwise we're just a burden. So I would like to make contributions here and I think the Caribbean is one of the most potentially amazing places on earth to be. Montserrat is most fascinating because number one it is geologically active to a point and I think that that's what sticks in most people's minds when they think about the place. It's an amazing island, and it's right in the middle of everything. So from a transportation and logistics standpoint, it's amazing. It has plenty of fresh air and water, plenty of sunlight, and it has geothermal power. It has waves. Everything you need for at least four different types of power are available at your fingertips in Montserrat. The people that I've met have been the friendliest people anywhere. Uh, when we arrived, we were astounded at how friendly and helpful everybody was. The atmosphere was excellent. It's a very low population here. There's almost no crime. It's hard to imagine a better place to be in my mind. I think the first thing that we had to do when we arrived was to listen. Everybody thinks of how they would change a place when they get there, but what brought you to the place in the first place? I don't want to change Montserrat fundamentally. 
but I do want to make contributions that will help everybody live here a little better. And that comes with science and technology. Many people complain about shortages of resources or problems that they have, but the absolute answer is education can solve every problem. When you consider we started with nothing but rocks and sticks thousands of years ago, and now we have computers and spacecraft and growing organs with a dot matrix printer, and that's pretty interesting when you think about the technologies we've found. And it all came because we saved what we learned. What we want to do in Montserrat is establish a technical base for people to help the young people learn, to establish science and technology here, not just as a fluke or a way to make a dollar, but as a way of life. Many people are not aware that a simple bit of knowledge can give them control over their world and their environment very, very easily. And what we want to make available to people is technologies like electronics and sensing, uh, communications and information technology, and give them a place to learn and to practice these things. We would love to establish a maker space, which is what allows young people to come together, try projects in electronics and robotics and computing. It's something like a small machine shop, but equipped with the advanced electronics and sensing. What I would really enjoy is having a place like that for people to come, to learn and to experience how they can express the artistic side of themselves, the creative sides of themselves, in a very concrete and physical way, something that can influence their environment for the better. We would love to make contributions to helping, uh, for instance, the solid waste management issues. This is an island that is it's basically an island where everything is brought in. Uh, very little food is grown here now, and that could be changed very greatly. Um, products that are manufactured from the outside world often leave a waste signature, plastics, glass, metals, these are things that need to be addressed. There are some real issues that I think that we can provide some excellent help with. So these are just a couple of the ideas we have in mind. Some of the things we can provide would be a wonderful science center for school children from all around the Caribbean to come in and to experience firsthand the principles that make the world work. If we can get people involved in this, if we can get them trained, we can do something very similar to the medical college of years before and air studios where so many of the famous artists recorded. Those things are lost now. Well, this, is a, this is a blank slate. It's an opportunity to start over and reestablish many of the things they had before on the island. They had a, an electronics manufacturing place here before, and we could see that again. This is very strategically located, and I think that this is an excellent place because it is such a controlled environment in so many ways to bring together the people and the talents that we need to give this place a new lease on life. Our goal is to help humanity as a whole. And that starts with the people, the very bottom. We are the foundation of everything, and that's what people have to realize. When we pass our ability to control and act in our own benefit onto others, we lose that control. I think that people have lost a lot of control of their lives and they don't know what to do next. If you can get people inspired with skills and knowledge and information, they take control of their lives again and become less reliant on others. Government is an important part of this. Government can provide leverage that the individual or a company cannot have or cannot bring to bear. So it is important to work with government, absolutely. But it really comes down to the minds and hearts of the people. I would say that the first thing to realize is scarcity is a myth. There are no shortages. Much of it is engineered or it's a lack of understanding of the resources we have. When we think about the metal that we ship off of the island for recycling, we could easily put a mini mill here and turn a lot of that into rebar, which is used for local construction. You'd save all around. That metal would stay here, the shipping costs would not be incurred, and the production of a useful product would be made. We have so many glass bottles going in the landfill that could be turned into fiberglass, which could be a product which would be exported. We have exported very little from the island that I'm aware of. We want to become a part of the leverage that helps that turn around. Rather than simply bringing materials in, we want to show people how to create their own. I think that one of the problems we face is the fact that 20 years ago, many of the farmers left, and the land was basically covered with ash. Ash is too porous to farm in. There are very simple methods that could be used to convert the existing land into extremely good farmland. And we also need to train people on how to grow their food. Most of the young people don't do it. And, you know, when things changed, the Agouti and Iguana population exploded because there was nobody controlling those acres over there. Well, now they're a real threat to anyone trying to grow food. I think we need to show people how to get around those issues. But there are many things we can bring, and fundamental is education. Our civilization is not our machines, it's not our buildings, it's not our music. It's not where we go, it's not what we build. Civilization is founded on one and only one thing. It is symbolic. It is information. 
Without our ability to save and share the experiences and knowledge that we accumulate with others, we would have no civilization. There's an old African proverb that says, when an old man dies, a library burns to the ground. I think that that statement should be in everyone's mind. They should realize what we lose when we do not communicate and share what we have learned. We're going to be contacting people and giving local talks very soon. I want to do presentations at least bi-weekly if we can and share some of the technical ideas and bring people in who are interested in helping us with what we're doing. In a nutshell, communication, that information is very important. We have a website and many people can visit it and see some of the projects we've worked on in the past, but we're looking to the future, not to the things we've done. Nobody who ever rests on their laurels makes any progress. You have to keep moving. Remember the shark. The shark cannot stop swimming because if it stops swimming, it can't breathe. It's our charge to improve the world, not wear it down. The other thing that strikes me is a very simple statement that always meant a lot to me, and it's, be ashamed to die until you've won a victory for humanity. Well, that's what we're here to do. Your party, my party, this is the people's party. Your party, my party, everybody get on board.